synchronize, you might want to pull this out and put it in a 3D folder. But let's go ahead and import that in. And instantly you can see we have a 3D look here. And I'm in what's known as an onion skin mode here, which is going to allow me to sort of look at this on a non-3D display so I can start to do uh, some alignment. And I have all sorts of different controls to control um, different parts of the conversion. So I've got a, a horizontal. If my camera mount wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly the way that I needed it, I could go ahead and adjust it this way. And you have different zoom features depending on uh, how much convergence you need to adjust, maybe on the horizontal. If you adjust this uh, far enough one direction, you may need to sort of zoom this particular point out here so it hides some of that. And again, you can do both eyes, left or right eye, depending on the version of Neo that you have. And again, there's, uh, there's skew and there's some keystoning. Again, some of these options vary and different types of tilt. Uh, which is available in the um, higher end Neo products. And of course, you can reset that at any, any time. All of this has to do with the active metadata. Let me go down here and put this uh, back on left eye and show you some of the features down here. Obviously, we can uh, play around with the different color. I am, in fact, trolling both eyes. So that's what these controls are up here. I'm just choosing to view the left eye data rather than that onion skin data. But here's where you can sort of get in and correct your image before you jump into Premiere. Of course, you can correct it in Premiere, but you might as well correct it at the source. And there's all sorts of other corrections here that you would expect. A lot of these are what you would see in products like Lightroom and Photoshop raw settings. So really, really nice. If you went ahead and loaded the 3D lookup tables, the LUTs that uh, Cineform has on their website, you can get some really amazing effects that you might want to go with. Uh, this is a beach bypass one that actually really looks pretty amazing and they've got all sorts of other settings here that you can go in and play with and save your own reset those back to the original so all of this has to do with the active metadata and I'm going to get back to that when we start talking about Adobe Premiere Pro let's take a look at some of the different 3d viewing options you have it really shows how flexible this software solution is with Premiere Pro so a couple things you can do if you happen to be on a laptop or a desktop that doesn't have any 3D monitors connected to it, then you can just simply go over here and put it in an anaglyph mode and use the colored glasses. So the traditional red, blue or red cyan glasses work fine. The colors obviously get to be very distorted. Uh, I find that using amber blue glasses sort of retain those colors the best, at least for me as well as green magenta uh, does uh, okay as well. One of the things I pointed out in the intro video is you actually get a better experience by using the cheap paper glasses that you see at a lot of the different places because those actually use a piece of film for each of the colors on the lenses so they get a much better representation of the color. You might have to adjust the color on your monitor to get the best result. You can also buy glasses uh, on Amazon.com. They've got either typical plastic uh, sunglasses looking kind or the paper one. Another thing to point out when you're using anaglyph glasses and even some of the other solutions out there if you're new to 3D is you don't want to have have your head close to the monitor like you are when you're editing. Uh, when you play your video back, you actually want to step back from the monitor at least four feet, if not more, to sort of get the right view of what it's going to be uh, looking like in its final form. So just a note, you don't want to have your head closed. You'll start to see a lot of ghosting anyway with, uh, with Anaglyph, but the further you go back, uh, the better that appearance gets. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other professional ways of looking at 3D video. So again, Anaglyph, very handy when you don't have a monitor that is capable of viewing. 3D. So let's look at a couple of the other 3D options that you have out there. I'm going to go under the view menu here and I'm going to go to OpenGL Player Preferences. What this is, is this allows you to hook up your display to your NVIDIA graphics card, for example. And if you happen to have an Adobe Mercury certified card, those cards work great in this mode as well. Those are uh, the supported Quadro cards and a few GeForce cards that we have out there. And what you'll see is you'll see a couple of settings for your internal window and your primary monitor full screen. Those are actually the same monitor. The interior window really refers to this window right here. How do you want to view that? 
versus when you hit alt enter when you go to playback full screen you have another mode of playing that back so again a couple different ways that you might want to play with that also if you happen to have a second monitor connected to your system like i do that can view 3d in a different way this really goes to show how well cineform thought this workflow out and it works great with premiere pro as well you have similar controls in premiere which you'll see so i'm going to go ahead and click on opengl 2d playback for this monitor and i'm going to jump down over to my uh, secondary display and put this in passive 3D. Now what passive 3D is, for those of you that uh, have been to the movies recently and you've seen movies like Avatar and Toy Story and those types of movies, they use real 3D glasses. And the real 3D glasses, again real 3D as a brand, uses a passive technology, non-powered glasses. So using monitors like the Hyundai monitor that you see here, you can plug that in as your secondary display, put that on horizontal interlace, and when you click OK and you play that back, you'll actually get an image that will play back wearing those real 3D glasses when you hit play. So again, I'm looking over at my Hyundai display and I happen to see that image looking great. One of the things that you want to note is you have to really have this set as a secondary display because the secondary display interlaced in this case and you really can't use it to edit with or you get a headache pretty quick. This also goes to show why they have some additional settings on here. So another setting that I use is one called standard 2D playback and I use this with a Panasonic Vera display which is a consumer 3D television set that you can buy at just about any electronics store. And these are the new 3D televisions that are coming out for 3D TV, for different cable and uh, Blu-ray, and they can actually be viewed in this workflow. All you need is a uh, simple DVI to HDMI cable, connect that up to your NVIDIA card, your second head, connect that to the HDMI display, and when you hit OK and play, we're going to go ahead and put this in what we call a side-by-side -side mode. Now, when the monitor detects that there's side-by-side -side mode, or you can also use top-bottom mode, the, the 3D television will automatically turn itself on, or you do have a 3D button that you can hit if it doesn't sense it. And when you hit play, you put on your active 3D glasses. These are the ones that are powered. Most of the really good ones that are out there are powered glasses. And when I hit play here, um, while I'm getting split screen here, I'm actually getting full th uh, breathtaking uh, 3D on a 50 inch monitor. It's amazing and one of my edit systems in my office has that on there. That's great when I want to see final result on a consumer display and this works great in Premiere Pro as I'll show you as well. Again you've got the flexibility of looking at it right here while you're making all of your adjustments. One of the questions that I get a lot from customers is they'll come up to me and they'll say Dave what is the best viewing option out there for someone who wants to edit in their nonlinear editor with a 3D display. And the best I've seen yet out there is the Alienware AW23 model. It's a full 1920 1080p monitor that works great. You pair that with an NVIDIA card, as I mentioned before, and you buy the NVIDIA 3D Vision kit that you see pictured here. And that's going to give you full 1080p on left and right and just an amazing picture. Uh, and the way you can use that, it's really very flexible in the way that it works. You can jump over to your preferences just like you did before. And you can take your internal window here and you can say set that to page flip. And I'm going to set my full screen experience to page flip as well. And by the way, if you happen to have a second Alienware display, you could set that to page flip. So that would allow both of your monitors, everything to be viewed by your glasses. And your glasses, is, you know, they won't jump around as they start sensing different signals. You can just edit with your glasses on. And from here, you just click OK. And what happens here is, is this particular monitor gets into a page flip mode and it, it's pretty unbelievable what the image looks like when you view it this way. And if you happen to have been at any of the trade shows and you've seen us showing Premiere Pro editing in 3D or even First Light, uh, it's pretty amazing and it's very easy on your eyes. So again, uh, definitely worth the money to take a look at uh, a really nice 3D monitor. These monitors, by the way, are typically gaming monitors. Uh, for games like you know Blizzard's World of Warcraft and things like that, but they make great editing displays. At a minimum, you might look at just buying one and using it as your preview monitor and then get a set of uh, 